Hi, and thanks for choosing to watch this C-Logic video in which we'll have a look at creating dynamic groups in the SalesLogic's web client. Under every main entity within SalesLogic's, we can group our data into list views. There are many standard groups such as all accounts and all contacts, but you may want to create your own groups and share those groups with others. With this in mind, there are two types of groups you can create. An ad hoc group, where you can group records purely based on personal selection, which is covered in another C-Logic video, and a dynamic group where the data is returned based on a set criteria within the database, which we'll cover here. Let's suppose you want to create a group of accounts that are customers in either California or Arizona. I'm doing this whilst logged on as administrator so I will see all return records, but be warned that a user will only see the records that they have access to through ownership. You need to start from the accounts entity. If you were building an opportunity group, you would start from opportunities and so on and so forth. First of all, click on the groups button and select add group. Or you can do this by right clicking and selecting add group from a tab. This opens the rather scary looking query builder. The top left panel are the tables in sales logics and if I click on a table I see the fields in that table on the right. At the bottom are some tabs that we will work through. On the properties tab give your group a name. The name is what appears in the group manager list and the display name is what appears on the actual group tab. It's easiest to leave these the same. If you're building a complicated group, you may want to add a description. Now click on the Conditions tab. This is probably the trickiest thing you will do in Sales Logics, but hey, if I can do it, anyone can. It's where you decide on the dynamic criteria to build your group. First thing we want is to return all accounts of type customer. So we click on the account table and look for the type field. Double click on type to assign conditions and now select your operator from the list. We'll select equal to and then we click browse which will list all entries in the field and we'll select customer. Now click OK. Now we only want customers in California or Arizona, so we need the state field. Click the address table and again double click state and assign the conditions and browse for AZ for Arizona. Then repeat the process for California. If we now look at our conditions, you may see that this doesn't really make sense. You can't have customers Arizona and California, so we need an OR statement. Also, if we leave it like this, we will get customers in Arizona, but accounts of any type in California, so we have to apply some brackets or nesting. This is a bit like brackets in maths, and the database will first return only accounts in Arizona and California, and then only return those of type customer. Simply click the plus or minus signs to add or take away a bracket. Let's check our results by clicking OK. It's always a good idea to do this to sense check your results. We can see our states, and also the type looks good. Getting the conditions right for groups takes a little practice, but logic will normally get you there. We can now change the layout of our group, which is the columns of data you see. Let's suppose we want to get rid of subtype and status and add in address line 1. First right click on the title and select edit. Go to the layout tab. Highlight subtype and click delete and then repeat for status. Now add address 1 by finding the field and double clicking to add it to the grid. Move it left by dragging or using the buttons below. 
click Edit to change things like the caption and the fixed width in the layout. You can also amend the sort order in the sorting tab. The instructions are pretty self-explanatory and you can sort on more than one field. Notice also the Help button which will give you good guidance on using these tabs. Once you are happy, click OK and view your group. You also have other options if you right click on the actual name of your group. First let's look at sharing a group. If you want let's say a colleague in marketing to also have access to your group, click share. Now click add and choose who should have access to your group. Once selected click OK and then OK again. Remember that the person you are sharing with must have access via ownership to be able to see any of the group records. We've covered the edit option, this is how you edit a group if you remember. Copy takes you back to Query Builder with a view to creating a copy of the group. You may use the copy as a starting point for a new similar group. Hide applies to any group and allows you to hide groups. You may use this if somebody has shared a group with you that you no longer need and you don't have access to delete. Manage Groups comes into play when you want to unhide a group. Select Manage Groups from any tab and then reselect the hidden group and click OK. Your group will be visible again. Export to Excel is only available to users with access to that functionality and does what it says, exports your group into Excel with neat headers. The delete option is self-explanatory and allows you to delete your group completely. Be warned though that if you were to delete a group, it would also delete it for any users you may have shared it with. Well there we have it, building dynamic groups in the SalesLogix web client done and dusted. Remember to always check the help files, but in the meantime, thanks for watching this C-Logic video.